Hello, it's me, Len, and I'm here today in this dilapidated, filthy old shed at an undisclosed location somewhere in the very rainy and cold Pacific Northwest. And this, my friends, is where many of my boxed up memories from my childhood came to die. I'm here with this flashlight to search through these rotten old boxes in an attempt to find my 12th grade binder so that I can do a flip through and see what kind of teenage secrets it might still hold. So when I was 18 years old and a senior in high school, I filmed a short flip through video of my binder with a VHS camcorder. That was in 1989, long before YouTube or a flip through video was ever even an idea. So I thought that if I was able to locate this binder today, 30 full years later, it might be fun to do a then and now look at where my rotten teenage brain was at that time. So why even show this binder? Like, big deal, a high school binder. Well, I was kind of a bad student in high school in that I did not do my work or my homework. Pretty much all I cared about at school was art and socializing. Since I wasn't doing my work, I was often spending my class time writing or drawing in my binder. As a result, my binders all through high school were more like a weird cross between a smash book, a journal, a collage book, and a sketchbook. Part one of this video will be the original flip through that I filmed exactly 30 years ago. Part two will be a flip through this same binder in its current condition, whatever that may be, but this time I will go slower and decode for you some of my weird teenage language and art with backstories, VHS video clips, and photos from that time period. Warning. This is the kid that was doing all of the drawing and writing in that binder. He was extremely immature and his sense of humor was firmly planted in the toilet. Expect to see some really inappropriate humor, probably more than a few drawings of poop or people's private parts, and tons of vulgar language. If these things are not your type of funny or you're at work, then I suggest you skip this video. Okay, so it really sucks in here. I'm gonna dig around and see if I can find my binder. So let's push play on the original VHS flip through. Hey, wanna see what my books look like for school? I don't care if you don't give a shit what they look like. You're gonna look at them. Lamello Fing, Chinese Lust Finger, Block Jock Sherlock, French Trapel, Black Beaver Fever, Go Pound Sand in Your Ass, Bowel Movement, Aussie Dyke, Bring Back Disco, Disco Inferno. Oh yeah, Prim. See, there's kind of a collage, Captain Crunch. Ch -ch 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 -ch. All the classics, you know. Vushi, Aussie Dyke, and her lesbian friends. Yeah! Screw crew. Ye dream. Block Jock Sherlock, French Trap Hair. Wait a minute. Hockey season ended months ago. What? What's that say? Yep. Yeah. Red on the head like dick on a dog. And there really was air. That's what it looks like when I floor. I fall down a great big tube and go plummeting. What's that say? Mutt master spanks his laster faster on a ten foot plaster caster while smoking. Okay. Lamello Fing. Aussie Dyke. Eat me. Jade Pussycat. That's that right there. Mm. What's that say? Yo, bye. Lust Finger Returns. Good old dependable ever ready diehard. Yeah. Aussie Dyke. Yeah. 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 Polish Dong. The Polish Dong is him right there. Mr. Voigt. That's Mr. Voigt. He's fucking hilarious. Oh yeah, there's the thing on the back of the shirt that you'll be seeing something. Mm -hmm. Old Joe clings. Oh yeah. 
And then here's this what I fucking do all fucking period every fucking day is draw a fucking picture. Look at that. Draw fucking pictures of shit and floor my ass off. See? Oh, what's this? Okay, you see that horse shit in there. See, that's all I fucking do. Here's my peaches. Asashio, pie face. Oh, here's a paper. It's really a fucking joke. You'd flow off it so fucking hard. Uh, what else is in here? Anything decent there? Fucking see books. Glock, Jock, Sherlock, French, Trapper. Rub. Hey. Love it. Fucking love it. Fuck yes. What's this say? Lem Enders, please return. Die. Die, pig bitch. Wait. To get this, because I work very hard at my studies, okay? What the fuck's wrong? Nice fucking pen, Lem. That's my book. 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 Here we are in 2019, and here is the exact same binder. I was able to find it, and it is miraculously in almost the exact same condition that it was 30 years ago, which is crazy. Okay, I'll explain some of the art and language that is going on throughout this thing. First off, I was totally living for Batman in 1989. During my 12th grade year, they announced that there was gonna be a Batman movie, which I was so excited about, I couldn't even believe it was gonna be a thing. So some of the stuff, like these, some of these sayings are from this book that I got when I was a teenager. Somehow I ended up with this book called The Visual Dictionary of Sex. When you're a teenage boy that is super immature and thinks everything is hilarious, a book like this is just the mother load. That's what a lot of these like little random sayings are from, that book. Okay, let's take a look inside here. Here is just like a collage of probably a bunch of nasty stuff, I'm sure. A lot of Friday the 13th. Basically, I was super obsessed with Jason Voorhees to the point that I would attempt to make my own movies with my friends as the actors, and none of them ever really worked out, but I tried. The Aussie Dyke and her lesbian friends were a group of girls that I was honestly a little afraid of. As far as I know, none of them were Australian and none of them were lesbians, so I have no clue where that name came from. They went to a different school and they used to low-key stalk me and sometimes pull pranks on me. And from time to time, I would hunt for them to return the favor. I want to find the Aussie Dyke. The Aussie Dyke and her lesbian friends are out there and I want to find them. Len? You're channeling Morton Downey Jr. I want you to tell me more. Tell me more about the Aussie Dyke. Quick hen! What else do we have? A lot of nonsense, it appears. What do we have here? The inspiration for this magnificent piece of artwork came to me one day when I heard a kid in class utter the phrase, red on the head like dick on a dog, which I had never heard before. So I thought, what would it look like if there was actually a kid at school who had a dog penis for a head? This is the type of stuff I did at school. It was so dumb. Some sort of a drawing, I believe that's me flooring. Something from that sex book, of course. Kinda dumb. Just a lot of like, nonsense. And once again, this had something to do with stuff in that ridiculous sex book that was so hilarious to me. The Polish Dawn. I'm gonna have to explain this to you, but not yet, because I'm sure that there's going to be more of this 
Polish dong nonsense. Getting the most out of class. Here's something I never looked at, even once, I'm sure. Instead, I just drew Polish dong stuff all over everything. And what do we have here? This is my friend Scott, and this is my friend Scott when he is stoned. For some reason, I really loved making fun of my friend Scott when he would get stoned. These are supposed to be drawings of Scott when he's stoned. <laughs> Jerry McKay was this old guy and the first two times that I met him, I happened to be packing a video camera and we had a super awkward interaction. So the thing that I found so fascinating about Jerry McKay was that he taped his glasses to his forehead, which you can see in the video. A couple of years later, I actually became really good friends with him and I would go sit downtown with him sometimes, have coffee, and we would sit on a bench and chat about stuff. And he was actually a really super cool dude. This little piece of artwork was probably created because I was mad at my friend Sissy because I felt like she was partying too much. So all through my school years and for many years afterwards, I was almost totally straight edge. I didn't smoke, drink, or use any drugs. I didn't even get drunk for the first time until I was 19 years old. And yes, I videotaped it. Despite being straight edge, I still hung out with all of the party kids and I had no problem with it. But sometimes, very rarely, I would get annoyed with my friend's party antics and I would get a little judgy. It would only last for a minute though. I was probably being judgy and mad at my friend Sissy when I drew this, but don't worry. I'm sure that her and her girlfriends let me know what a dickhead I was being. And it probably sounded a lot like this. You're a fucking fucker. Shut Len, that don't dead. make sense. You're a dickhead. Hey. Get that fucking... <laughs> get that off, Len. you dickhead. I'm flooring so hard right now. This appears to be me. I'm flooring, as seen right here. I should explain the concept of flooring to you. Flooring is like falling down with laughter, but you're taking it to the next level. It's where you've seen or heard something so ridiculous, you literally can't get any oxygen to your brain and you pass out. I mean, not literally, of course, you're just acting. You've been floored by whatever it was that was hilarious. It could be something simple, like someone is acting really ridiculous, so you're on the floor. This is the view of Len from the floor where I belong. Oh, shit. Or let's say you got a phone call from someone you really didn't want to hear from. This might floor you. Or maybe your friend hooked up with someone that he swore he would never hook up with. And you ask, who is she? And when you hear the answer, you floor. Now, as the levels of ridiculousness go up, so does the intensity of your flooring. If it's really hilarious, you might take your flooring up to a more dramatic level, falling down and writhing around on the ground. You could even take your flooring to such a level that it almost becomes a performance and nobody witnessing this would have any idea what it is that you're doing. And you could use flooring in a sentence to your friends in a bunch of different ways. Like, let's say a movie came out that you knew was going to be really terrible, and you could say, let's go floor off of that movie, which means let's go make fun of it. Or you could have something really hilarious to tell a friend, so you could say, I'm about to floor you so hard. Or just, come floor with me, and they would know what you're talking about. And, and you motherfucker floor with me. What? I just saw Scott Gray and Ron Garden do something so bad. Skeleton Crew was the name of the band my two friends and I had in high school. 
I used to try to come up with logos and t-shirt ideas and stuff. We didn't have a singer or any songs though. We'd set up and jam in my living room when my dad was gone. Peaches. What do we have in here? This was like class predictions for what people would do after school got out. And that was thing that I drew the cover for. This is where I should probably explain the Polish dong. My favorite teacher my senior year was Mr. Voigt, who my friends and I affectionately referred to as the Polish dong. I'm pretty sure he was actually Polish, but I have no idea where the dong part came from. He was this kind of eccentric dude and he had some really funny mannerisms, especially when he got angry. Because his mannerisms seem so weird to us sometimes, we like to imagine that he was tripping on mushrooms or acid while he was teaching, which would lead me to sketching somewhat psychedelic pictures of him. I even painted a poster of him that I hung on my bedroom wall. That's a teacher at school. We draw him. His name's Voight. He's insane. He's we fucking went, nuts. We went. Once he was even featured on a local news program because he lived in this cool underground house. I recorded the program and played it on repeat along with my favorite music videos of the time. He was my favorite teacher even though he often kicked me out of class and gave me detention. If you're familiar with the 1980s teen movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I was kind of like Jeff Spicoli and he was Mr. Hand. I loved that guy. What's this? This was the school newspaper. That is a picture of my friend Han when we were doing a school lip sync. And I bet there's another picture in here. Yes. This one's me and my friend Han, Scott, and Shane. We were doing a lip sync of Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses for a homecoming competition. I wish I could play the music, but YouTube will hit me with a copyright strike. Do you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby, and you're gonna die. You know the rest. Hey, there's my friend Scott again. Hey, look, and there's a drawing of Scott again. Hmm. This was the band that was playing at Tolo, 1989. Mirage. These dudes look like they rocked. Jackpot Food Mart fucking rules. Jackpot Food Mart was the local mini mart in our town and my friends and I would go in there and cause havoc often. Woo! This is a jackpot dance! Woo! We're rockin' in jackpot! And do a lot of shoplifting. Very bad. Back then, it was much easier to get away with stuff like this because stores didn't have security like they do now. Remember, kids, shoplifting gives you all kinds of grief. <laughs> Wait, come to think of it, I actually shoplifted this anti-shoplifting sign, gave it a paint job, and hung it in my bedroom. What a dick! Merry Christmas from Jason Voorhees. And then... <clears throat> um... Right. Good lord. That's literally a condom. That condom is 30 years old. Captain Crunch was my all-time favorite cereal. My dad wouldn't buy it for me though, so I had to use my own money to support my habit. 
I loved it so much I painted a poster to hang in my bedroom and I even painted the captain on the front of my favorite jacket. Now you might be wondering, with all of this wasting of class time and assorted silly behavior, what my grades were like. Well, it should come as no surprise that they were awful. My progress reports were an absolute nightmare, and most of the time I was just barely passing. Except for art class, of course. He may have been smiling here, but I can assure you that my dad was not at all happy about my grades. All through high school, he tried many different methods to get me to put more effort into my schoolwork. I recall that once, in what I'm guessing was a moment of desperation, he even purchased this study seminar on VHS called Where There's a Will, There's an A. It was like three hours long or something on multiple tapes. How to get better grades in high school. Where there's a will, there's an A. Honestly, I never watched the tapes, and I recorded over them with music videos by hair metal bands. Sorry, Dad. But I learned it by watching you. Funny thing is, even though my grades were in the toilet and I wasted all of my class time, my attendance was nearly perfect every year. In fact, my attendance was so good that multiple years I won awards for not missing a single school day. I suppose it's true though that I was only attending school for art class and to socialize. But I was always on time and I rarely missed a day. Thankfully though, for everyone involved, this was my senior year, so I'd be saying goodbye forever to Chimicum School. And on that note, we have come to the end of my binder flip through, which now feels more like a mini documentary about what a fuck up I was in high school, but that's okay. So now that this ancient piece of my childhood has been fully documented, I wonder what I should do with this binder. Maybe take it into the backyard and burn it in some kind of weird ceremony, setting all of these bound up memories free into the night sky? Unfortunately, my apartment doesn't have a backyard, and if I start a fire in the parking lot, I'm guessing the cops will probably come, so maybe I'll just hold on to it for now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this long forgotten artifact from my 12th grade year, and I thank you for watching. You know, actually, I feel like this video should end with one last look at the guys who rocked Tolo 1989. Mirage. I mean, check these dudes out. So kick-ass.